Hey designer, Alex here. Welcome to this course about Inception Design System for Adobe XD. If you want to check out the full playlist with all the videos, make sure to click here or to click down in the description below. Link is going to be there. So enjoy this lesson. Atoms and molecules are bare bones of every single design system out there, including Inception Design System. So in this video, I'm going to show you the structure of atoms and molecules, where they are located, why they are used for and what they are used for. So without any further ado, Let's get started. So here is Inception Design System master file once again, and I'm using this master file just because it's much simpler for me to show you every single atom and molecule right here. So uh, in case you're using this one or the light file, it doesn't matter. Every single atom and molecule is located inside and all the master components for them are located in this folder on the left hand side called atoms and molecules. So we have grids, logo, logos and so much more. You can uh, explore all of them, but all of them are located right here at the top. As this design system grows, as I add updates in the future, of course, we are going to have more and more atoms and molecules. And not to make this video hugely long, you can explore every single one of them for yourself in the future. But what I want to do for this video is just to show you the overall structure, how everything looks like and how to get your head around atoms and molecules in inception design system. So as I said, all of them are right here at the top. So let's start from the start. What we have right here is uh, our uh, intro. So uh, if you want to read more about how this design system works, if you can be bothered to watch this course, then you can read right here. Then we have our grids and layouts. Then we have our uh, typography and headings and body color copy. Then we have main colors and supporting colors right here. Then we have a logo, logos and icons. So all of these are atoms and molecules. So if I zoom in a little bit closer, you can see that we have a logo and let me hide myself so you can see a little bit better. We have our main logo, logo with text and logo with text centered. What you can do right here is use exactly the same dimensions for your client's logo in exactly the same orientation. So it can be just a main logo without text. It can be a logo with right hand text or left hand text, or it can be logo centered, but just make sure that it has the same dimensions. So if you change these components, anywhere, it's going to update throughout the design system. And that's the whole point, like I showed you previously with colors and with typography. So what we have below are just some random logos of these big companies, and you can use them, uh, for example, for partnerships and stuff like that when you're creating for your clients. And below that we have icons. Uh, pay attention to this. Um, on majority of places uh, for atoms and molecules, you're going to find this, which says top tip. And I just gave you these tips uh, in order for you to understand uh, much better and much more easily how to work with this design system. But for this particular tip, it says to replace existing icons with your own, just paste your icons inside the original ones here. Otherwise, just replace the icons with your own inside each master component that you use. What that means is basically, and I'm going to explain that in a future video, because I'm going to create a dedicated video for icons and animated icons, which are a huge part of Inception Design System and Adobe XD. So in this case, just for now, make sure to change these icons inside of these icons. So let's say if I select this one and open it up, go to the layers panel, you can see it's price tag icon. Once again, this dash structure. So what you can do is paste your icon inside of here, make sure it's 24 by 24 and you have the frame for each particular icon. So make sure to fit it inside of that frame. So it can be 24 by 24 or a bit lower Then remove the original icon. So you can select all of these hit delete, delete them. And then what's going to happen is it's going to update wherever this icon is located in the design system with your new icon. And you can clearly see the trend right here. So no matter if you are updating uh, the color or typography or button or this icon in this case, it's going to update in real time throughout the design system. But it's extremely important that you do this on master components. So every single component that you can see right here is a master component. And you can find that out by simply looking right here and see if this uh, diamond is filled in or hollowed out. You can also see that right here. So because it's uh, uh, filled in, that means it's master component. But if it was hollowed out, that would mean that it's a uh, uh, 
a child component of this master component or simply some other component so once again make sure to do everything in this design system inside of the master components so i'm going to show you what i mean by that inside of the buttons so these are the buttons for now as i said i'm going to add more of them in the future but these are the buttons for now let me hide myself so you can see them a bit better so for all of these components which have this main component what that means is if i select this main component you can see it's made by uh, this filled in diamond and you can see it right here and you can clearly notice that it doesn't have any states why i did this is is quite uh, simple actually if you want to add your own animations if you want to add your own states and you don't like what i did right here then you can use these main components as i said in almost all places you're going to find main components you can simply edit them there and then you can simply add your own animations your own transitions your own states you can do whatever you want with these main components you can also do this with uh, these main components other ones so every single other component which has states first state is usually called enabled and that's the how should I say this main component of that component which has these different states so as I said this main component and you can see it right here has just default state but if I select this button default large which is enabled in this case you can see right here on the right hand side that we have all of these states and all of these states are listed right here so what you can do in this case is because this is a default component but if i select this one you can see that the diamond is hollowed out and you can see all of these diamonds are hollowed out which indicates that this is the child component of this master component in other words it's just a state which i put right here for easier viewing so you can clearly glance how these states are going to look like so the key thing to remember right here is if you want to make any change make sure to change it on enabled components so on this first state if you want to make a change and then add your own states and animations make sure to do it on main components so where it says main or if you want it to apply to every single state which I created previously, make sure to change it here on enabled. So to show you a bit more what I mean is, let me hide myself so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to come in right here and change the overall uh, rounded corners on this button. So right here, what we have is corner radius is four. So let's change it to something huge like 50, press enter. And you can see straight away that it updates in real time on all of these buttons also it's going to update in real time throughout this design system whatever this button is used so uh, as you can clearly tell i'm coming back to this because it's really important every single change that you make on master component is going to cascade down to all of these child components and as a parent component is going to translate to child components but not the other way around so if i go back so let's say edit and undo corner radius it's going to come back so let's say that if i change this one select it hide myself so you can see it come right here change it to 50 and you can see that it just changed this instance because this is the ch uh, child of this parent. So this is the master component, this is the instance or children if you want to, however you want to look at it. It's just going to change this state, this instance, this child, however you want to call it, not the master component. So it's not going to go the other way around. So if I go back, once again, if you want to make this change for it to cascade down, you have to make that change right here. Same story goes for the text. You can see it says default large everywhere. And because uh, in this uh, button is not um, restricted with size, so you can see if I select it right here, and come right here you can see that we have padding uh, enabled so when i start typing it's going to start enlarging so let's say that we want to uh, say something like add to cart now you can see as i'm typing the button is expanding but you can also find other buttons which are fixed in size but this button because it's default it's going to have this padding and you can clearly explore and see inside of the tips you can clearly see that right here so height is fixed but width is auto so uh, what that means as i explained is when you start typing it's going to change in size for all of these components where it says auto make sure to see if the if it is auto height auto width or both or if it is a fixed uh, height and fixed width so if i zoom in right here you have height and width 
fixed so it's not going to update it's not going to change but if you change it right here it's going to update automatically so if i go back to default large and show you some other components so these are all the buttons these are all the text input and text areas what we have right here for example is the icon so if i zoom in a little bit closer and open it up so let's say this one so this is our main so as i said without any states but if i click on enabled it's going to have states so let me show you that let's close that click right here and you can see the states all the way to here so once again main is not going to have states and default or enabled is going to have states but what i want to show you is this so if i open it up you can see we have the cursor which is going to blink at certain states but not in all states but the key thing right here is this so if you want to change the position of the icon or of the text what you can do is simply click right here because they are located in a stack you can see that for all of these states it's going to change but it would not change if i uh, changed it right here or right here or right here but just in the default state and of course to add additional icon because this is a component as well let's find icons and let's use price tag for example just click and drag until it's blue let go and it's going to place that icon. It's going to replace that icon in that place because this was the component and this is going to uh, cascade down throughout this. Of course, wherever it's located, wherever it's used, this component for this text input icon, for example, it's going to update in real time. So just pay attention when you're making these changes to update them inside of the main component once again, you can find that if the green um, diamond is filled or hollowed out, if it's filled, then you can edit that master component. If it's hollowed out, then what you can do is, I'm going to show you that. So let me hide myself so you can see it a little bit better. What I'm going to do is, let's say, let's say I want to go to templates and I want to locate one of those fields. So let's say this one, here we go. So let's say because I changed this and update it and just made a bit of a mess right here, but you can quite easily fix that. But let's say if I want to edit this, what I want to do is quickly go to the layers panel, go to my content, click on my inputs, second row, here it is. And what you can do is you can right click and where it says edit main component, click there and it's going to take you to edit this main component. What you can do right here is because once again, this diamond is filled in, it's not hollowed out. Whatever change you make right here, so if, whether it's the corner radius, whether it's the background color, whether it's uh, what you said right here, it's going to translate to all of those other components. So once again, key takeaway here for all atoms and molecules is whatever you uh, make, whatever change you make, make sure to always make it on the default state on the master component then it's going to cascade down to all the child components and that way it's going to be much easier for you to track and to follow what you've done and when you make changes it's going to cascade down to all the children or all child components from this master component in the next video we are going to talk about wireframes why they are important how can you edit and change them so i'll see you there Thank you for watching this video. If you want to check out the previous one from this playlist, make sure to click right here. Or to check out the next one from this playlist, make sure to click right here. If you want to see full playlist for all videos from this course, make sure to check down in the description below. Link for the full playlist is going to be down there in case you missed something.